What's going on, y'all? So listen. What's going on, y'all? So we are back again. Oop. <clears throat> we back again on the right day, okay? I'm not finna put this off. Girl, we got a two-part reunion. Child. This reunion about to be a mess, okay? Because Latrice and Marie back at it again. Girl. I just don't understand. I just don't understand. Like, y'all get together and y'all come together and y'all fix y'all issues. And then y'all look at the stuff from the rest of the season. Y'all already know if we ended the season off on a bad note and then we come back and... You know, we started off on a bad note because we're continuing where we left off at because that's what reality does if this is really reality. And then we get progressively better. So why is it that you let stuff that you already know is going to happen in the beginning of the season get to you and get you to the point where you're talking shit or whatever happens that by the time the season is over with and y'all get to the reunion, y'all not cool no more or not even working towards being cool. Now, what the fuck was that? Okay, that's like a waste of my goddamn time. Like, y'all be giving us hope and then y'all just don't follow fucking through. Anyway, Bell Collective, season two, episode nine, Bell Beginnings and Endings, okay? So we picked up what we left off last week with Tambra leaving and, you know, Marie trying to understand why Tambra is leaving. And, you know, Marie whole thing is I had no idea what was going on between Tysha and um, Tambra. And she kind of in her feelings that Tambra was leaving, you know. And I just find it really, really funny and really, really odd how Marie had the nurse to be in her feelings that Tambra left and eventually Akisha left her event. When you have done the exact same thing, because she said something about that, you know, when Akisha had her little event um, and she was bringing over the shareholders or whatever, and uh, she had Marie. Marie was like, so I'm going to still come to her event, even though she abruptly left my event. Baby, you've been doing that to your homegirl events all the time. Ever since we first met you in season one, baby, you've been leaving that girl um stuff or messing up her stuff. And you got the nerve to feel a way about the fact that Tambra left and Akisha left. Now, let me just tell you this. I'm not here for Tysha, okay? Regardless of how we all feel about Tambra and this relationship, I feel like, you know, it just came out of nowhere. Well, technically, it didn't really come out of nowhere. Her having this type of storyline, because we did not realize that it was going to go this way with her character, um, it just came out of nowhere for us, or at least for me, because I just really wasn't, I wasn't expecting this, this drama, whatever. And honestly, it's not even her that's keeping up the drama. It's everybody else around her that's focusing on her relationship, whether they, whether it's real or fake. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if it's real or fake because it's affecting you none. Okay. And that's my whole point. Granted, I'm not really here for her like that. But the way that they're harping on this relationship and, oh, she got skeletons. Bitch, y'all all got skeletons. Y'all all got fucked up relationships. But yet y'all are harping on her shit and you want her to tell you this, 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 or what you want to hear. And then for Ty should have come up in there and be like, how come she just couldn't talk to me or whatever? No, girl. No, girl. You been saying all this stuff to uh, Ty Letitia and everybody else except for her. Okay. So saying it to Letitia is saying it to everybody. The person, the person that you should have told was Tambra. That's, that's the person that you got the issue with. That's the person who, man, that you supposedly be having this emotional situation with. You should have told her, like, your man is not on the up and up and I'm coming to you as a woman. You don't tell this person who's going to tell this person who's going to tell this person and play telephone tree. So therefore... Tysha had no issue, I mean, no real reason to fucking get upset or to feel some type of way that Tambra did not want to speak to her, especially at that event. First of all, it is Marie's event, okay, and why would she want to come in there? And we ain't never seen Tambra come up in there and try to mess up people's event. So, therefore, she didn't want to mess that event up, all right? And like she said, you're desperate as hell. You're desperate as hell because Tambra said, y'all been talked about this shit. And the last time that y'all talked about some stuff was like five years ago. And now all of a sudden, because the show is on, you want to bring up this issue that you supposedly be doing something with greedy. Oh, girl, what? It don't make sense. It makes storyline. And, and Tamra, you in on it too. Okay? Because at the end of the day, everybody acting like, oh, why she didn't leave? Why she leave? And why she just didn't sit here and talk to her like a woman? 
Bitch, she ain't got to. And why do you care? Somebody is talking on your relationship. You want to sit down and talk to them when you ain't got nothing for them and you already know what your relationship is it, what, what it's about. You ain't got to prove nothing to nobody. You ain't finna sit down there and entertain a bitch that come on there trying to be a fucking side chick. And for once, oh my goodness, I never thought I would say this, but baby, when I tell you I was here for Akeisha, Akeisha said, listen, at the end of the day, I got my issues with Tambor, but that's still my homegirl. And I'm not a messy bitch like they want to say that I am. And that the um Tambor ain't here, Greedy ain't here. So therefore, we're not gonna have this discussion about this whole relationship or whatever that's going on. Taisha, she Taisha, she was like, So um, if you can talk about it, I can talk about it. Cause you up here talking to me. She said, I'm talking to everybody. Because exactly what happened, what type or what Akeisha said, don't do, and what she's not about to participate in. That's exactly what wound up happening. As soon as she leaves out of there, you know, and I respect Akeisha for saying that. Because that don't make no sense. Like, why y'all, this is why we in the mess that we in now. Because y'all keep on talking about this lady's relationship. It's, it, it's what is it doing for you? And Taisha, you literally coming on here, like Akeisha said, like a side chick. You literally, and that's my thing. Y'all get on reality TV and y'all want to fuck up y'all own reputation. You say that you just decorated or whatever. And so now before I see you, when I see you, if I even remember how you look, if I come down there to fucking Jackson, I'm going to be like, oh, you the bitch that was up there trying to break up a relationship being a side chick. That's what you're going to be known for in my eyes. You literally come on TV to be a fucking side chick. Like, come on, come on. You trying to get in the midst of somebody's relationship and it got you nowhere. You probably had your time with him. You probably did something in the past, but that's the fucking past. And at one point in time, Tambra and oh boy, they broke up for whatever reason they broke it up. And it could have been a possibility that you did have a relationship with him and they was broken up. It could have been a possibility that you did have a relationship and they was together and that's probably the reason why they broke up. But at the end of the day, you ain't have no current relationship with him and they still together. Leave it the fuck alone, okay? It's just so fucking dumb at this point. And um, I'm just, you know, Latisha, Latisha like... <laughs> Well, I didn't know it. I didn't know it. I didn't think she was coming over here. I didn't know that she was going to be invited or whatever. I was with Akeisha. Girl, you came now for the whole intent of starting some shit. You ain't come there just to support Marie. You had a feeling and you, it, come on. If you knew Marie, you knew Marie is on this show and you know that she going to throw an event. Of course, she's inviting all of the girls. So you knew that that girl was going to be there. And I agree with Akeisha. You knew some shit was going to happen. And that's why you opened up your mouth when Tambra got up because Tambra said absolutely nothing to you. You could have sat your ass there and said nothing too. But you going to say, so Tambra, why are you leaving? You can't talk like a woman. We can't talk this situation out since you were up here talking to everybody else about it. You started it. Tamber did the right thing. If she felt like she didn't want to be in your presence, she ain't have to be in your presence. Now, Tamber, let me get on your ass, okay? What the fuck is up with the relationship? <laughs> now, I just said, you know, and I'm only saying that because at the end, you know, when they do the little update of what they doing, she is like, you know, me and Greedy, uh, De Demond, we finna uh, move in together and all this stuff. And maybe that'll put to end about these rumors about our relationship, whether it's real or fake. No, the fuck it won't. No, the fuck it won't. Okay, because again, you can be doing it for a storyline in the way that you just said it. It said that I'm doing this for a storyline to prove a fucking point. It don't say that I love this person or... I just don't get it. And honestly, I'm going to be real with y'all. And I tried to hold back on saying this. I don't see how DeMond and Tambra go together. I don't see how they go together. You know, I know they say opposites attract. I just don't see how they go together. And it's none of my business, but that's just what it is. Moving on from that, you know, uh, I felt bad for Marie. You know what I'm saying? Because Marie was dealing with the fact that her mama had left. Uh, she hadn't spoken to her in weeks. And she had to go, according to Letitia, she told us to let's come on so we can go to the hood. I said, girl, <laughs> I just, I don't know. It just sounds funny when she said it. I said, the what, girl? She said, the hood, okay? She said, girl, we went down here to the hood to see where her mama was at. And I felt bad for her because if you have, some of us have been in situations where we had to go find a family member. And just to see if they was alive because we just know that either they was going to come back with us or they weren't going to come back with us but we just need to set eyes on them and to make sure that they were alive and breathing 
And that's what Marie had to do with her mother. And the fact that she had to go through all these houses and people were telling her she's here, she's there, she's there, she's there. And then she finally found her. And that broke my heart for her to come out that house the way that she was looking. And you can clearly tell that she either just got through doing something or was about to get started on doing something and been doing something. And when she told Marie, um, why you here, whatever, you know what, just go ahead and I'll meet you in 20 minutes. Just go ahead and get up out of here, but give me $30. And then said, wait a minute, I'll meet you in 20 minutes, but give me $20 or some shit like that. I just felt bad for Marie because, you know, at the end of the day, you cannot force a person to get help. And I know this is the reason why she's doing those clinics or whatever, because of her situation and her family history with drugs and the mother situation. And I feel like that's a good motivation factor. She's like, if I can't help my mama, I can help somebody else. You know, sometimes we can't save everybody, you know, and... Some people just don't want to be saved. And at this moment, her mother don't want to be saved. So her business is continuing to, you know, grow and do what she got to do. And that was basically her update. Moving on from that, Akeisha, she doing the Ferris Street Project. She breaking land, as we saw in her update. I said, this bitch then came on one season. <laughs> We can say what the fuck we want to say. We can say she probably got the idea from Letitia and said, bitch, I see your um little situation. I can one-up it because my family was the one that built this shit. So, therefore, I'm the one that's going to get it done. Mama said she was going to get something done and mama got it done. Okay, she had a little shareholder meeting or whatever, brunch. Letitia came up in that bitch and said, now, see, I feel like she's trying to one-up me and she's trying to compete with me. You know, they always try to... Uh, when the queen in town, they try to have another person come in and try to knock us over, but it ain't going to happen. I said, I don't know, Miss Letitia, because <laughs> maybe it's because it's Akeisha's new first season and maybe it's because of her connections. But baby, um, Akeisha came in and did what you couldn't. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> as much as I ragged on Akeisha, Akeisha came in and did what Letitia couldn't. Okay. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, Lakeisha was sitting there like, Letitia was sitting there just like, girl, ain't this about a bitch? I know she was pissed, okay? And, you know, she shouted out everybody, brought everybody in, talked about everybody's business. Lakeisha, that was a good look. That was a good look. You trying to win us over? You ain't won me over yet, but you got a lot of points. You got a, a lot of points this episode. Um... But, yeah, you know, they tried to talk to Tambra about the whole situation. I was just like, let that shit go. Marie, you said that you didn't know about the situation with um, Tysha. And if you would have known, you wouldn't have. What? So, I need to not invite people. I said, I know you're not talking because this is what you be doing. At one point, you didn't even want Letitia to invite Latrice to her shit. Or you didn't want to show up. But you did to support her. Okay? And it's, it's, it's a good thing that you did not know. It's a good thing that you did not know. You did not need to know this lady's business like that because it's bullshit, okay? And I'm saying bullshit meaning not her business, but the fact that they keep spreading her business as if it's real news, okay? You ain't the first motherfucker that had a suspicious relationship or whatever. Why is that newsworthy that we got to talk about it? But anyway, moving on front. I mean, Timber is not even really that interesting, to be honest. And if Timber does not come back for another season... It's A-OK -okay with me. It is A-OK -okay with me. I feel like they was pulling their straws and they did something just to jazz her up to make her interesting enough to have people to talk something about her, even if it's coming out very fake. But moving on from that, um, who else? Girl, Latrice and Cliff. I just don't see them lasting. I just don't see them lasting. And I'm sorry, I just don't. You're... <laughs> Either that or they need to just go to counseling. They need to go to counseling because she has some trauma that she... She got childhood trauma. She got a lot of shit that she's going through. Um, dealing with deaths in her family. Dealing with abandonment. Dealing with, you know, issues with men and all of that. And the fact that she literally chose an older man to be with. That's some daddy issues right there, okay? You need to get through that. And then you're complaining about the fact that he's a controlling, that, you know, he raises his voice and he does this and he does that. Well, you chose a man that was older because he probably reminds you of your father. And therefore, that's what you're getting. You're getting dad. You call him zaddy, but you're actually getting father, okay? That is what you're getting. And you now want to feel some type of way about it. And this whole baby issue, 
I feel like if it keeps going on, that is going to be what's really going to break them up. That's going to be what's breaking them up because I don't feel like she wants a baby at all. She giving that excuse of, you know, I need to work. I need to work. Let me get, you know, I'm in my business stuff or whatever. And I get that because cool, you know, women can be out here and be business women and um, I have babies and, and still have success and all that stuff. But it is her choice. And for her to say that she'll get a baby up for adoption last week or get an abortion without him, girl, that was red flags on the plate right then and there. And that's why I said, oh, this ain't going to last. Because why would you tell your man that? Why would you tell your man that? Okay. <laughs> like, what? I just don't see it. You have to go from being with him all the time and then you staying at your brother's house for a whole week just so you can cool down because you need break from him because y'all got to it after this baby issue. You still don't know if you're pregnant. And my whole thing is this. So you mean to tell me you have an inclination that you could be or you can't be pregnant. You just don't know. You keep bringing it up, but yet you won't go get a test. So in all that time where you feel as though you done missed your period a couple of months, maybe three months in a row, you don't go get a test at that time? You don't decide to go to the doctor to see what's going on or make an appointment or something like that? You wait until you get back with Cliff after he damn near broke his arm off or cut his arm off because he was out there in nature, you know, being Bob the Cliff the Builder, you know, cut down the trees and shit. Cliff Bunyan, that's what he was down there doing. He was being Cliff Bunyan. Um, and you didn't decide to just go ahead and take a test. You waited to take a test then so that y'all can get over that shit. But hey, she's not pregnant. And, you know, she's telling him his her issues with him. And when she's talking about the control and stuff or whatever and the aggressiveness, and he was like, well, I ain't got no soft uh, 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 lady voice or uh, woman voice or whatever. I'm a man. I talk and I talk loud and all this stuff. And every time she would say her grief, and this is what I cannot stand in any type of relationship, whether it's friendship, business, or, uh, uh, intimate, whatever. If a person is telling you their issues and what they feel is going on and how it makes them feel, and then you come back with a, well, that's just how I am. Well, you know, I do this because this or whatever. You're invalidating them. You're invalidating their feelings, and it's almost as if, what the fuck I'm telling you this for because you're not really hearing it. Because no matter how I tell you how I feel, it's going to be, well, that's just how I am, and it is what it is. Nobody wants to hear that. Nobody wants to hear that. And he has a problem with her being so, I guess, this. at the end of the day, I feel like he has a real problem with her being a businesswoman. I, I really do. He really thought that he can get a young girl that he could just keep in the house and be barefoot and pregnant. And you fucked around and got somebody that has ambition, goals, and very much independent and likes to work and build an empire. That's on you. That's on you. At the end of the day, I just, I don't know. I don't see it for them lasting. I give them, if they say this season, this show goes for like... Um, two more seasons, maybe three more seasons. I see in the last season them getting a divorce or at least separation. And speaking of divorce and separation, Glenn and um, Miss Leticia, uh, Leticia, they go to couples counseling. They had the counselor come over there to her place, you know, uh, her place of business. And basically, it's a bunch of mess. It's a bunch of mess that we've already heard. He want to throw up in there that Letitia was not there for him when he was going through the things that he was going through. And she said, what are you talking about? First of all, before he said that, he was like, you know, she independent. And I love seeing that business side of her. I love seeing that grow going. But it's like she going this direction. I'm going this direction. And it's like he wants her to stay in the place that she was when they first got together. He don't like that. He want to say that he's okay with it and he likes seeing this uh, part of her being this businesswoman or whatever, but he has an issue with it because he feels like it's interfering in the relationship. And uh, I guess, you know, it's not the same because she has her own mind and she can do her own thing. And I guess from what he can see, she really don't need him. She really don't need him. If it comes down to it, she will be a-okay on her own. Okay, without him. And I feel as though he has an issue with that because he can't really control her 
or or manipulate her to stay and do things that he wants her to do in certain areas or whatever anymore with this new independent independence and this growing business that she has because she could do it on her own you know and she had to reassure this man that i want you it's not that I don't need you. It's that I want you. That's why I'm still here. That's why I'm trying to make this work. But when he threw that whole thing in there talking about some, you know what, that when I was going through what I was going through, and Letitia said, what are you talking about? He's talking about depression, you know? And I'm sitting here like, now see, please, and, and I'm so glad Letitia brought it up because I didn't want to be the asshole to say it, but since she said it, so given that y'all heard my struggles with depression, like, bitch, I am low-key in, back in it, <laughs> and I don't know if I fully gotten out of it after the last time, because let me tell you something, that last time, um, prior to me moving, it was really, really bad. It was really, really bad. I literally got on this camera, and that was the only, like, really bright spot of the day, was me getting on the camera, just talking about whatever I was talking about, because it allowed me to escape and talk about other shit, besides me thinking about my own issues, or my own insecurities, or whatever it was that was just keeping me in the fucking fog, and when I tell you I was in a dark-ass place, I was in a dark-ass place, and I have never been that deep in depression, okay? So, it took a long time to get up out of that bitch. And then certain things have been going on that, um, you know, besides the fact that I moved, you know, I felt a little bit like myself slipping into something or whatever. But so I'm trying to keep myself, you know, occupied and moving and doing shit so that my mind can keep rolling and not think about certain stuff or whatever so that, you know, I won't get too down or too hard on myself to slide up in that shit because it's very easy and I can very much feel myself going back sometimes. And... I don't like it when people use stuff, you know, because depression has become such a common thing, a common mental illness that people want to use as an excuse or use for this reason or that reason, whether or not they're using it for real or they're using it just as an excuse to get out of something. And I'm so glad that Letitia brought that up. She said, so all of a sudden now you want to use this and I just hope he's not playing on my shit and trying to use depression as a reason or a way to manipulate her to get back with him and to come, you know, be on his side 100% and all that shit. Because the way he threw that shit out there, I said, since when? And I understand everybody don't talk about it, but I don't know. It just was awfully convenient that he threw it out there and he could possibly, you know, because men don't talk about their feelings. Like he said, men really don't talk about their feelings. That's how they are brought up sometimes. So it could be, it could be. And I just really hope that he is not you know, using it as an excuse, as a way to manipulate her to get back with him, you know? And so you got that going on. And when the counselor asked her, do you love this man? She said, yes, I love him. She said, are you in love with him? She said, I don't know. I am scared to love him. I am scared to be in love with him. That's what it was. And I feel as though I know she said, I am scared to love him. And then the counselor said, you mean in to be in love with him because you said that you love him. And she said, yeah, I really feel like she meant it when she first said, I am scared to love him. It wasn't the in love thing. She is scared. She loves, she has some love for him, but it's not the same. And she even admitted that, you know, she know if she would have realized a long time ago that she was falling out of love with him, she could have stopped it. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes you can't really just stop it. They've been together since they've been teenagers. They're high school teenagers, high school sweethearts and all that. And sometimes it's just not meant to be this long. Sometimes you just grow apart. And maybe this is their moment to grow apart and to go to get something better. Because you can sit here, Glenn, start crying and all this stuff. And, you know, because she crying and she's saying she's not perfect and you know, look at the hurt that I'm causing and all this stuff. Yeah, you're causing her a lot of hurt and you don't care. And you just sat there and you said whatever needed to be said to get her to come back. That's what it was. Because as soon as she got her ass back up in the house, what did they say the update was? He was texting and talking to other women still. So you went through all of this shit for what? For what? Oh, I want my family back. You don't want your family back that bad. You don't want your family back that bad. And at the end of the day, I I just, I don't know which way Letitia's going to go. And even though she said if something like this happened again, um, we could sign a divorce paper right here, right now. 
I really don't feel like that's going to happen. I really feel like she will stay regardless because that's all she knows. That's all she knows. But like I said, that's it. That, this has been a good season. It's been a good season. All right. Um, this is one of the better shows that I actually really like. Um, you know, keep it up, ladies. You guys did a good job. I know y'all finna cut up at this goddamn reunion. <laughs> I'm actually looking forward to the reunion because at the... Baby, let me just be honest with y'all. Because it's about to be Sunday tomorrow. Because, well, it's almost Saturday in like 12 minutes. It's about to be Saturday. So that means it's about to be Sunday in 24 hours. Listen, let me just tell y'all this. The Real Housewives of Atlanta reunions, they could have gave us a 30-minute goddamn reunion. That's how fucking bad this shit was. And usually I will say, oh, we don't need two, three episodes. You could have gave us an hour and 30 minutes. Baby, y'all could have just gave us 30 minutes. Y'all could have gave us just 30 minutes because I have never watched a Real Housewives of Atlanta season reunion and been this fucking disappointed and bored. And y'all know I don't do that shit. I be like, okay, well, we ain't need that first part. But then shit gets good in the second part. The third part is still good, but it brings it on back down to home. Bored the first two parts. I don't even care to look at the third part, but I'm only looking at it tomorrow because I got to finish it out for y'all. That's it. That's it. Y'all tell me how y'all feel. We on the same page. I'll see y'all later, though. Enjoy your weekend. I think I might go see Woman King at the work either today or Sunday. Mm, who knows? But y'all tell me how y'all feel about this season, and I'll see y'all later. Peace.